Hello Kent, my name is Joe Hill and I'm a carpenter and I swing a hammer but I also am a student of the Holy Spirit and there's a few things I want to show you in the Word of God. Let's start by reading chapter 40 verse 3 of Isaiah. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Can't This was uh, foretold by these prophets. Um, Isaiah, uh, Zechariah, Ezekiel, um, and there's others that foretold about flat earth. They didn't say the words flat earth, but they told about it happening and it coming and it taking the world by storm, which it is doing. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. In verse 16, And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. <clears throat> I will make darkness light before them, and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them, and not forsake them. In Isaiah 43, verses 5 and 6, it says, Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. And then in verse 8 through 10, it says, Bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together, and let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this, and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses, that they may be justified, or let them hear and say, It is truth. Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me, and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall there be after me. This is Isaiah chapter 44, verses 3 through 8. For I will pour upon water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thine offspring. And they shall spring up as among the grass, as willows by the watercourses. One shall say, I am the Lord's, and another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. And another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord, and surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who, as I shall call, and shall declare it, and set it in the order for me, since I appointed the ancient people? And things that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? Ye are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. Zechariah chapter 12, verses 2 through 4. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all people round about. When they shall be in, in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of earth be gathered together against it. Kent. Uh, chapter 13 in Zechariah, verse 4. It's talking about these uh, prophets. Um, and it says, and in 
And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision when he hath prophesied. Neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. We're not lying, Kent. Dr. Hovind, I'm going to be blunt in this video because I know you're very busy and you have a lot of things that you're working on. Uh, to serve God and I appreciate that and I'm not putting that down in any way What I am doing is trying to bring awareness to you of the times we are living in and the things that are being fulfilled I'm going to give you an example of one thing that uh, is in my opinion undeniable um, of the time that we are living in and that is going to be in Revelation I'm going to give you an example of something in our world right now that is a dead perfect match to what is in Revelation 13. In verse 11, John sees with his eyes, because he said, I beheld, that means to see something, another beast coming up out of the earth. What does it mean to come up out of the earth? It could mean a couple things. I understand that. It could mean like a tree growing out of the earth. But there's another meaning that is much more uh, in context because uh, two verses later, that same thing uh, does great wonders and he makes fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men. That's a very specific thin thing, Kent. So you need to think about this. Uh, you need to forget flat earth. You need to forget all of the debate. And you need to ask yourself if you believe the book of Revelation is... is uh, what it says in verse 1, chapter 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Um, and then it says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Kent, the time is at hand. Okay? Um, SpaceX comes up out of earth, with their Falcon 9 rocket that does have two horns on the side of it and it's a two-stage rocket um, and it lifts Dragon into orbit the Dragon capsule and then in on December 21st 2015 was the first time that that Falcon 9 rocket delivered Dragon into orbit and then came back down and landed on the earth using its thrust it literally made fire come down from heaven on earth in the sight of men, Kent. So, reality check. Do you believe? Or do you think that uh, this book of warning isn't, isn't an actual book of warning? And I know, Kent, that you are very, very, very familiar and very educated in Daniel's visions. And that's something the Lord led me to uh, in chapter 7 and 8 um, is a perfect description of of uh, the fourth beast is a is a, the fourth kingdom it's the fourth king that shall rise out of the earth um, the falcon 9 rocket is what he describes in Daniel 7 verse 7 this particular rocket and you can look it up on Google or whatever. Uh, it is dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. Um, it is it is the rocket of that market. Um, it has great iron teeth. It has these grid fins that are like four foot by four foot. They're huge uh, to steer it back to its landing so that it can fulfill Revelation thirteen thirteen successfully. Um, and it stamps the residue with the feet of it. What's left is, uh, you know, the plume. Um, and it is diverse from all the other ones. And it does have ten horns. Those dragon capsules, they made ten of those. Before they started building the next ones that we find in Daniel 7 verse 8. When he was considering. And he saw another one come up. Before three of the first were plucked up by the roots. Well, the Falcon Heavy is three... Falcon 9 boosters strapped together as a rocket. So the rest of, uh, well, actually Daniel 8 
verse 3 through 8 verse 10 is a description Daniel gives of the Falcon Heavy rocket launch with Dragon as cargo. I appreciate everything you do for the kingdom, Kent, but on this topic right here, you have to realize that Flat Earth is coming from Jesus and that he taught me in my spirit. And I think what that means is that I'm supposed to be screaming it at the top of my lungs to the world. And I mean, I'm supposed to forget about my reputation and forget about what people in this world think of me because I feel that I am called in righteousness by the Most High God. And I know that's quite the statement to say, but when I'm reading about it in chapter 42 of Isaiah, he called me in righteousness to say this, and he's holding my hand, and that's where I get my strength. And that's why you see this persistence from these flat earthers, because they're inspired by God. So, whatever you consider the intellectual truth to be, the globe and all of these debates and arguments, I would forget about all of that if I were you, and I would hit the word and realize that these foretold stories by these prophets all these years ago, centuries ago, they're all coming to true with precision accuracy today. And the time is running short for people to realize that we are much further in uh, these end time stories than most people are realizing. So everything I'm saying, I say it in love, Kent, and uh, I do appreciate your service for the Lord. But on this thing, you need to get it right.